Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match stream. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a bunch of 2v2 matches that were played recently. People seem to be practicing for the upcoming tournament, which is this Saturday. So, I mean, if you're watching this as a VOD later, you might still have time. It is Saturday, April the 25th, but that is coming up very quickly. It's three days from when I record this. I don't know when you guys are going to be watching this. For those of you watching live, obviously you're watching it now, but those of you who aren't, if it's April 26th or later, I am sorry. But there are tournaments every month, so you can go into the next one. Anyway, it is a 2v2 tournament. It is going to be double elimination with random seeding, and you can look in the forums for all the details if you want to sign up. Like I said, there's still three days left, so go and sign up. Whoever can. If you, if you are free that day... I recommend signing up just for the sake of actually playing. The thing is, yeah, you might not necessarily win, that's true, but you are still probably going to get a few games in just because between random seeding and double elimination, you're guaranteed at least three games because it's best of three in the winners and best of one in the losers bracket. So that's basically how it's set up. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to the first game, which is going to be on intersections. It's going to be Anarchid and Matthew GB versus Orphilius and Parzival. Parzival, you may remember, tried organizing a tournament a little while ago, a few months ago, a North American 1v1 tournament. That was a little bit wonky due to inexperience, but I'm sure they learned quite a lot. However, they are, this is not their tournament. They are simply playing practicing here with Orphilius. I don't know who they're going to be teaming up with in the tournament, but at this point, it looks like it was just people practicing 2v2s and getting auto-matched by the Balancer. So that's why Anarchid has a 12.30 LO teammate, and Orphilius and Parzival are together. This is an, this might be interesting, see how it plays out. But anyway, Anarchid is going to be fairly strong, fairly dominating force here. I'm, I'm going to hazard the guess that's going to be the case. Anyway, Intersection is more of a 1v1 map than a 2v2 map, though 1v1 maps are what's going to be played in the tournament. In 2v2, what tends to happen... In 1v1, you see players take the metal extractors fairly quick in the main bases. They take them, and then they have they take a little while after the first two to take the rest. With teams, though, one player will typically take a pair, and the other player will take the other pair. That's typically what happens. This map also encourages very quick air starts, so I imagine we're going to see probably Matthew GB and Parzival go for... Oh, no, Orphelius is going for the air start. Or Parzival is going for a hover start instead. Matthew, GB, and Anarchid have not done anything pre-game, so I don't know what they are doing yet, but when we start the game, we'll find out. Anyway, once that's done, basically it goes down, like Intersection always does, to who can take the corners and then who can hold the center. Taking the corners is more important, but the center, it's the direct path, so you got to make sure you have that. Anyway, let's begin. So what are the Southeast players going to do? Matthew is going for the air start. Anarchid has not yet chosen their start. Slightly surprising to see that. Okay, so there is the air start. Anarchid coming in with no factory yet. While we see Parzival and Orphelius. Orphelius having gone for the air plant. And Parzival having gone for the hover factory. So Parzival is going to be... Not building anything? That's mildly unusual. I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, Orphelius setting up a very, very quick Wavern. Right out of the gate. I'm not sure what the plan is there. Orphelius right now has no nothing in storage. They have 8 metal, 6, 17 energy. But that's going to take 3 minutes. Redirect, actually 4 minutes. On the other hand, Matthew getting early ravens and, and early raven up. Well, light vehicle factor from Anarchid coming in with a few scorchers. So given this start, I'm expecting Anarchid to... Well, probably send one of the scorchers to scout. The other scorcher will just be around to defend. Not sure what's going to happen. Although now that they know that Parzival is going to Discon. Okay, sorry. One sec. I think someone is Twitch not working. Twitch is hmm. Twitch is working for me, so I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, bad at the game. Sorry about that. So yeah, with let's just get catch up. I'm apologizing. Sorry for everyone who's watching on YouTube. Yeah, I know. A little annoying. So anyway, at this point, Anakin and Matthew GB know what Orphelius and Parzival are up to. I'm expecting Anarchid at this point, is not going to bother going forward. I mean, there's really no point. There's a Stardust going in the south. I'm pretty sure that was spotted. And over to the north, 
area. The commander's in the way. Unupgraded, but still in the way. They do know about the Wyvern. I'm waiting with bated breath for those Swifts. Where are those Swifts? Matthew GB, we need Swifts here. Anyway. Hmm. Okay, Twitch is just being weird right now. That's unfortunate. Twitch is really annoying when it comes to trying to do double streaming. I don't know why. I think because of the whole hacking attempt from a month ago, it's... I don't know how effective it is. Like, I have the stream key up. It looks like it works. I get VODs recorded to it. I apologize if it's not working. Anyway, Flail coming in to help get rid of the bombers, as expected. Wolverine's still coming up, and... Well, the Raven's going for the Metal Extractors from the looks of it. Are they... What? What's the Raven doing? Matthew G... You, okay. Trying to hit the Flail, which is a suicidal attack, as has just been witnessed. But yeah, when you have a setup like that... Okay, Orphelius is going to get comp dive. This is not... Is this going to work? Oh, well, the defenders aren't enough. This is not going to work. Orphelius losing their commander right out of the... Right out of the gate, pretty much. That is going to hurt the Wolverine production, though. Even then, they're still... It's... Minute and a half to two minutes, that's not a particularly large change. I'm surprised Matthew GB is not making Swifts, or for that matter, making much of anything, though admittedly, they are probably fairly new at the game. But yeah, general tip, you always want to make units, even if you have your factor on low priority. And when you have Ravens, you want to attack Metal Extractors first, and you don't want to attack when your opponent has anti-air like that. As Anakin points out in the game itself, don't waste bombers, because that's 600 metal that has just been thrown away. Granted, Orphelius' commander's loss is a fairly big blow, so I imagine that's going to help, but still... Yeah, don't waste bombers. Though so Matthew GB clearly fairly new, Anderkid is coaching them. Thank you, Anderkid. It's always good to coach new players. Whenever you see a new player on your team, easier in small teams, obviously. Good idea to coach them. So Orphelius... They're still, even with this reclaim, they're still waiting on a lot of time the build power that's the bottleneck here right now. Well, okay, that in the middle, but build power is still a fairly big bottleneck. Matthew getting up a crane, so it looks like they're going for the corner expansions. If, yep, that's exactly what they're doing, going for this side expansion, setting that all up nicely, while Parzival and Orphelius have not really spread out too much. I really don't understand why this Wolverine cheese has been continued up to this point. There was, when it was spotted, it still had four minutes left, it maybe had, I don't know, 200 metal at most pushed into it. I don't understand what the rationale is for having gone for for so long. But anyway, at this point, neither side has really taken the corners yet. Matthew GB is taking advantage of the cranes, taking the center very quickly, taking the corners extremely quickly. Parzival and Orphelius are being probably way too cautious at this point. Anakin and Matthew GB just taking everything. That is going to be huge. And that is absolutely massive right now. And... Orphelius and Parzival just about to get their Wyvern up, and that Wyvern, what is it going to attack? Because what it attacks is going to determine a lot moving forward. A, a huge amount is going to be determined by this. And it looks like it is going to go for... What? Seriously? The Northwest? Well, I mean, at least it didn't get damaged too much, but... Why not go for the main base? Get a commander. Get... Okay, actually, it's 2,000 damage shot, so maybe it's not the best idea. Well, 2,001 damage, yeah, for 2,000 damage in effect. So that's 2,000 damage a shot. You need two of them to take out a factory, which isn't worth it. If you're going in two waves, that will not work. Parzival, using a bomb... Wow, I've, I haven't seen a... Scan... Okay, it's called a standoff commander now. It was called a bombard commander before. I haven't seen a bombard commander used ever. Almost never. You, you don't see them. I'm a bit surprised, personally. I mean, not entirely. Recon's popular because it can move quickly, and Battlecom's popular because it's just so tough. Bombard Commander with its range, yeah. Especially you haven't been upgraded so much. Wow, that was... Sheesh. Missile Launcher with... Yeah, that's Missile Launcher with a huge range. That's basically what Bombard Commander does. Didn't really work in this case, unfortunately. So at this point, we see very clearly that Anarchid and Matthew GB have taken over pretty much the entire map metal-wise. Matthew GB primarily has taken it over. They've 
They've done well. That's exactly what you should do if you aren't particularly confident about your relative skill. Setting up economy like that, especially when you have a really good player covering you, that's going to help a ton for your team. Whereas Orphelius and Parsifal being extremely cautious about expanding, which is unusual. Orphelius thankfully is managing to reclaim their commander, but still, it's unusual that they're that cautious, especially that they're not scouting out that quickly. The Halberds will be able to tear apart the Southwest expansion though. So that's about to go. Where? Okay, so at this point... Oh, I see. At this point, Matthew Jubi had to leave. But I, I don't think it's going to matter. Anakin can handle three factories, no problem. Wait, what? Oh, I see. Yes. Don't... Okay, so anyway, Matthew Jubi, learning how the resign, personal resign and team resign commands work. Anarcha now playing one on two, but with two players with economy, so at this point... Ooh, Anarchist Commander goes down in one shot. Having been a Recon Commander, it didn't really have a whole lot to work with. Yeah, that Wyvern... Okay, second Wyvern coming in. With that second Wyvern, that's going to be a big deal. That could easily get rid of these factories. Just probably even get rid of both of these at the same time. However, there's enough anti-air. I don't think the Wyverns will ever be a threat again. The loss of the Southwest is a bit of a problem, though. Where are those cranes? We see that they're... Well, where are the cranes, actually? One here. And that's it! There's only one crane for Anarchid. Not the best position, but at least Anarchid will be able to spend all the resources that they need to. So Anarchid at this point has a fairly healthy economy, 26 metal, compared to a total of 12 with from their opponents. I mean, basically the only thing that, that Parzival and Orphelius have is it's easier to micro 2 on 1. I don't think that's going to matter at this point when you consider that Anarchid has nearly tripled the economy, though. The only saving grace has been that Anarchid is, is spending a lot of that on fairly expensive units, so it's going to be a little while before that manifests. But at this point, that little while is now over, and the Reapers and Raptors are up. As are the Crashers, because, you know, good measure. Just in case, when that, where is that Wyvern? And now Orphelia is leaving, so now it's Parzival versus Anarchid. Why Orphelius left? How that makes it more fair is beyond me. It was fair before. If it was ever going to be fair, it was fair when it was one on two. Not one on one. Anarchid has basically got this in the bag. Okay, well that was kind of embarrassing. But... 2v2s are a strange beast. Normally you don't see these sorts of resigns in tournaments though. Unless as Fireman's playing, or Firepook as they're called right now. If they're playing, then they tend to resign and their teammate tends to win. Actually, it's 50-50 whether the teammate wins, but that's... That's the Fireplug strategy. Resign and win. At this point, I don't know. I think Anarchid's... Like I said, Anarchid's got it. I don't know why Orphelius did that. That was just bizarre. I will be surprised if Parzival doesn't surrender in the next minute. Three Roverns, too. I mean, at this point, the factories could be wiped out. Or actually, better target the Reapers. Although, you need four to take them out efficiently, but still. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of it. It's kind of over. I just... Well, that's just formality. Finish the matchup, but I, I don't see this going anywhere. Android has the Swifts they need. They have everything else they need. They have a second commander, which is... Yeah, it's not going to help out too much. Although, good good shot, Parzival. You did pick the right target. The Reaper is a good target there for the Wolverine. You do want to hit those because you want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. But Parzival realizing no chance, no way of surviving in this particular case, surrenders a rather bizarre 2v2, but that's just the first match. And the first match is always a bit of a burner match. So, next match is going to be Ivan D and Felthos versus Flipstep and Parzival again on Deadlands. However, Parzival did stick it out to the end, so I'm imagining this next match is going to be a little bit more even and more interesting. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.